Because <laughs> I know we have a lot of hands out there, and they're going to be very angry with me if I don't get to at least some of them. Steve, please. Steve Larrabee, Rand. I have a question for Amran, but first I'd just like to defend the organizers for leaving out Europe. I'm sure that if you had more time that they would have done it. But the title of this uh, conference was Turkey's New Geopolitics. And the, the two areas that were chosen, it seems to me, are the right ones. This is where new developments are happening. And therefore, I think you know the choice was, was a, a natural, natural, <coughs> natural choice, not because they, they wanted to uh, cast Europe to the, the side. But my question for Amaran is, why do you think uh, what happened happened in terms of uh, the linkage with Nagorno Karabakh? Did the Turkish government somehow miscalculate? Uh, or, and second of all, what if they had not done? relationship with Azerbaijan, which is extremely important in energy uh, and other areas, would, would that really have helped? Had, had the there are two ways of looking at this. The first is that you could say Turkish should have anticipated Azerbaijan's reaction and therefore never come up with that kind of architecture for the protocols to begin with, though I don't believe that the Azer Armenians would have ever signed anything that did include that linkage, so that would have gone nowhere anyway. The second question to ask is, uh, what's happening inside Turkey within the power structure there? And I think what you see, and of course, Mr. Kanakalola may dispute this, is that you, on the one hand, you had President Gül, who was very sincerely committed to this process, and who was backed by a group of diplomats within the foreign ministry who believed that it was time now to remove that linkage, that it was not serving Turkey's national interest any more, that it was any more than it was serving peace in the region. Because for all these years that that border's been shut and that we've not had ties with Armenia, I haven't seen a single iota of progress in the Minsk group talks. So there is that. Um, and what would have happened had we ignored the Azeris? Well, you say, of course, Azerbaijan is an extremely important and as you point out, yes, uh, they are a very vital part of our strategy of becoming an energy hub. But at the end of the day, how else would Azerbaijan sell its oil to the West if it, that pipeline were not going through Turkey? I think we're seeing a case a bit of, of uh, the, the tail wagging the dog here. And I think if Turkey could have, you know, um, stuck with it, stuck to its guns there. Uh, gentleman, gentleman in the white shirt in the back there, please. Ah, two gentlemen with white shirts. <laughs> it's Washington, you know. Um, my name is Aaron Rank. I'm with Congresswoman Ginny Brown Lee from Florida. And uh, this is a question to Mr. Babala. You say the Turks don't care. Uh, I watched the hearings through CNN Turk on my, at my computer, I think there's a great deal of interest when Congress addresses the issue. Uh, but my question is then, and this goes to both of you, uh, does it help or hurt the process within Turkey when Congress takes it up? It will certainly and clearly hurt the process and uh, of reconciliation. There is a will, and genuine will, as Amir and Zaman just mentioned about the vigils and all these you know, social and developments going on in Turkey, it will cut off all the possibilities of you know, this process to continue. And at least we do have this process. You know, there is a will, I can, I can stress that. And, um, and Davutol, a couple of weeks ago in, in a conference in Oxford, he was very upbeat about the future of this process. And um, I think, and the situation now, after all these new discussions about Turkey's uh, direction in foreign policy and all this flotilla event and afterwards with the UN vote and um, high sentiments in Turkey, you know, it will just put a fuel into the fire. You know, it's, it's not going to help and it's not going to ser serve any, 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 any side's interest. 
if you really derail, if you want to really derail the U.S.-Turkish relations, pass the resolution. Uh, Britain, do you agree with that? Does the, do the congressional dynamics help or hurt? Well, help or hurt the what? Process, Are we talking about Turkish-Armenian reconciliation? Yes. <laughs> Frankly, if we're sincere about reconciliation, why the hell should it matter what the U.S. Congress does or not? This is between us and the Armenians, and I deliberately say Armenians rather than Armenia, because we're talking about the Armenian people, be whether they live in the Republic of Armenia or Glendale or Istanbul. This is between us and them. Thank you. Yeah, go right in the front here, please. <laughs> right over here. It's a frozen conflict. Uh, as a Turkish American, I'm with the. My name is Oya Bain, and I'm with the Assembly of Turkish American Associations. As a Turkish American who lived in this country for many years, and as a Turk who goes to. Turkish American who goes to Turkey every day. I can see the difference of the Armenian situation in Turkey, where we are extremely close to the Armenians in Turkey, and we come to the United States and we face a very militant, very extreme diaspora. I mean, totally irrational diaspora. So we are totally brutalized by the Armenian diaspora in this country, and that uh, really uh, creates a big problem. The second issue, if it's simple reconciliation, if sitting down and simple understanding each other, it is most welcome. But if you look at the Armenian constitution, uh, half of Turkey is shown as Western Armenia. I mean, what do you say to this? If you take Ahmadinejad, which of course Americans are very annoyed at him, he says we are going to annihilate Israel and the world, you know, is petrified. And this other country, little Armenia, tells half of Turkey is Western Armenia. How are you going to do peace and reconciliation with this? First of all, there has to be some flexibility in the Armenian diaspora and in the Armenian government itself. For the Turkish Armenians, I might head to them. I love them. You know, we have had centuries, years of friendship, and that's a different story. But uh, there are certain realities that need to be fixed beforehand. My second question is very factual. What is happening to Nabucco, and what is happening to South Stream? I mean, where are they with